All I want to do is get this uh, this casting up to just around 400, maybe a, a little bit less than 400, but three to 400 degrees is all I'm looking for. We got a good tinning in there. It's going to bond to it. And when the material comes in at 720 and it touches that that um, tin surface there, it's gonna it's gonna join it like glue. Okay, one last little scrape off the top. Okay, I got my channel locks and I'm gonna grab the pot and I'm gonna bring it over, but I'm gonna bring you over first and put you in here where you can watch me pour it down into the uh, cavity there. Okay, I got the pot so that I can tilt it and control it. All right, and I want to kind of like just really get right down in there. I got some seep trying to seep out. There we go, we finally got it locked in. All right, we had a little bit of leak out over here and a little bit over here, but uh, it did solidify there. That's why I didn't want to give it too much temperature on there. All right, so now we're going to see if we can flip this over because we want to pour the top now. Okay, we like that height. How stable is that? Let's go ahead and put it on the ground here. I like that much better. All right, here goes the top. Little tiny bit of shrinkage. Okay, we're gonna uh, let that cool for a second and we're gonna peel it apart and all the extra pieces or the flashing we're going to be putting those back into the pot and getting ready to pour the center hub as soon as we break this apart. Now let's see how we did. Carried it in here, it's still pretty hot. Oh, it looks nice. Okay, wrench. <laughs> Whew. Mm, uh, we need pliers, something here. I'm buried in. 
There we go. Okay, I gotta go get my rawhide mallet. Now she's splitting apart. There we go, okay. I'm gonna get a pry bar. gonna be a nice tight fit but well, here's a big screwdriver maybe I can get it here I'm gonna need another one I think <clears throat> you know what it is it's the straight boss it's the straight boss that joins so part of that will have to be eaten out okay excellent Whew. all right and then this one here gonna have to come at the same time uh, probably just the grooves of the turbo uh, end mill there um, create enough friction to keep that from uh, just popping right out of there all right that's a beautiful pour right there all right <clears throat> we've got our shaft here and we got our bearing we got this all cleaned up we had very very successful pour on our uh, pivot point um, that absolutely had zero babbit in it they had a piece of rubber gasket material sandwiched in there and a couple bolts holding this thing together um, a real a real band-aid I'll tell you all right um, I, I kind of planned out where we want this to be in in the center there because we're gonna we're gonna smoke this not like in the 70s but we're gonna smoke this um, with some soot and uh, we're gonna put it together and we want to make sure that we're not having any um, episodes with the metal touching we need a little bit bigger did I have a bigger I don't have a bigger okay there that thing's useful finally okay um, striker there it is this is how bad at pouring goes. <laughs> okay, we don't want a good flame. We want a sooty flame. We smoking it. You can probably put a couple coats on there how many millimeters of smoke you want okay um, now now we want to go ahead and we want to slide this on over without touching that and getting this down over over the end there there we go okay 
Now we want to slide this one down on here. Down in there, good. Now, now we're going to go ahead put it on the other way here. <laughs> B-block clamp is whipping my butt. Okay. Ugh. All right, those are both uh, sitting sitting down. This will just keep them from spreading apart, okay? That, we're, we're confident that we have a nice tight fit in there. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull that plug that we put in here. Soon we get the babbit right out of the center of that, which... Um, Huh, would have thought the smoke would take care of that, but it was a hacksaw cut too, so that could be abrasive. Um, we know how to do that. Okay. Okay, let's go outside and let's pour it. All right, I put this tube out here so that we could set this on here and we could get a nice straight pour right in the top of there. All right, let's go ahead and do our last skim here. We're still we're still real hot on that. I'm not going to bother. Um, I'm not going to bother heating that up anymore. Got that all set pretty good. The pot's ready. We got our pliers here. All right, here we go. All right, we didn't have any leaking out. The main thing is right now, making sure that we have a good pour before we shut down our pot. I did have a rawhide mallet here. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right, this is moving pretty good with the hammer. I think I'm going to carry it into the press and we're just going to press this on out. Um, I can get uh, just comfort getting it out in there and making sure that I don't damage any of these collars in case we have to report. So I'm just going to run in there and do it because I just we got a molten pot out there and I just want to make sure that I'm as fast as I possibly can. Whew. All right, this is some hot, but uh, I press these the shaft and the collars out. I'm going to see if I can hold this up. All right. What a beautiful pour. All right. I'm going to take some still shots of this as well, just in case the light is uh, uh, just reflecting a little bit. Nice uniform right on out to both of those on each side. The seals will be able to pop in there. All right, after this cools down, this is the size shaft that actually will ride in there. And I'm going to make sure that it is skimmed and the, the uh, grease port and all of that is all set up and uh, complete. 
All right, I gotta go secure my uh, molten pot out there and clean up my mess. And by that time, this uh, should be cooled down and then we can get on to just doing a little bit of the finishing work. And we've wrapped up this duck bearing. All right, <clears throat> we just went in and took a rotary burr and we took a little bit off of this surface right along each side of these um, bosses. And this boss, kind of holds in or is created and, and the ball is cut out so that those could pass in through there. We went ahead and massaged this edge around here and also the same thing on this boss here. Now this doesn't have to move much <clears throat> but it is it is a you know when this is bolted in and the halls you know all put together and they get that universal joint up the end and they have a rough hole going through the the boat with a rubber pedro and a dripless, or I mean a, a packing gland on it. And um, so it, it, it's almost straight in line, but it needs to be a little bit. They'll get this mounted up in the boat and they will massage this as needed. You don't need to take out any more material than you need to to have that set in there. All right, and there's plenty of positive load on there and they're gonna wanna slap some paint and everything else on it. Okay, punch mark, punch mark. It's gotta go in this way here. All right, now I got uh, uh, a pair and a spare set of rubber seal. These are rubber on rubber, all right? And he'll, they'll, they'll put a coat of paint on here. They have some super duper paint down there uh, that, that really holds up to the salt water and everything. So I don't need to mess it up by putting this in there yet. Uh, they, can, they can do that and they can install it. So this job is all done. Oh, I forgot to show you actually. And that uh, is Zerk fitting or his grease line will go down through this hole right here and that's how they, they, they run it. Um, the Babbitt, uh, I drilled through, cleaned out that, that hole, tapped it, and then I took a uh, quarter inch uh, uh, high speed tool bit and broached it lengthwise in the lathe while I had it set up in there. And I took and I skimmed the bore so this uh, inch and three eighths um, Aquamet 22 um, slides freely through here, which this is a couple thousands larger than uh, the nominal. It always comes that way, and so they're going to have a good fit. So this thing is ready to rock and roll. You know, each time I do a project, I pay attention to the comments, and uh, there was a few things uh, that was asked the last time I did a Babbitt pour uh, about tinning and this and that. Now. You knew that I, I had an inside cavity on the solid slug there and inside is a, a hollowed out area so that once it's poured it can't, it can't travel around in there. And as long as you're doing a pour like that and it's warm enough on the outside and it cools down you won't have a separation on that. When do you, you, you usually tin your surfaces when you got something that opens up. Okay so that the half a shell is going to be hanging. That's probably a good time to go ahead and do tinning and help bond your Babbitt to your, uh, your, your housing. All right, um, also I talked a little bit about the temperatures of melting. Uh, the, uh, the solder was melting at 418 thereabouts and the Babbitt that I use has a melting temperature somewhere around 720 I think it is and um, other than that thanks for stopping in I know I didn't carry everything about this job uh, the making of this other than the few shots I gave you at the beginning of the video uh, it, I just had I had to put the push on it it had to be done today and uh, in my schedule anyway alright until next time get her done.